quiere cambios radicales ya, pero sin proponer soluciones reales. En este video verás a la tía progre que, muy posiblemente, viste en otros videos los cuales fueron virales. Desde atacar con tomate un cuadro de Van Gogh, hasta arrestos por marchas violentas. En esta ocasión fue entrevistada por Jacob Res Mogg, un político británico del Partido Conservador. Durante la entrevista verás cómo la tía solo grita, usa sus emociones de manera inadecuada para transmitir sus ideas y hasta investigó el valor de las posesiones del mencionado político. Sí, así como lo escuchas, así de lo que está. Mira el video completo y dime qué opinas. Pero antes, si este tipo tipo de contenido te gusta, suscríbete a nuestro canal. Tenemos la meta a mediano plazo de llegar a los 100.000 suscriptores. Sin mayor dilación, empecemos. But I'm really delighted to be joined by Just Stop World spokesman Phoebe Plummer. Thank you for coming in because I know you don't agree with me. Um, how do you square the circle that people want to be more prosperous, they want to lead comfortable lives, but you're saying it's absolutely urgent we stop emissions now? How do you make the two work? Hi, Jacob. Thank you so much for having me on. As you say, I'm Phoebe. I'm 21 and I'm a student from London and a supporter of Just Stop Oil. And I wonder why you think it's incompatible to help people with the cost of living crisis and to switch to renewables, which are nine times cheaper than fossil fuels. Can you name me one of your viewers who is suffering the consequences of the cost of living crisis, who doesn't want their energy bills to be nine times cheaper right now? Well, unfortunately, that's not what's happening um, because the sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow and you need to have fossil fuel back up to make up the gap. About half our energy every day is still coming from natural gas. Where's that going to come from? Well, why aren't we implementing renewable technology? The largest solar farm in the UK was built in six weeks. But it's not it, takes, it takes up to 28 years for any oil to come out of the ground in the North Sea. But it's not going to produce any energy at night. That's the problem with renewables, is that they don't provide the base load that you need. We already have the capacity to, to provide so much of our energy from renewables without any, any technology needed for, for, for storage solutions. But where is this coming from? Because when the wind doesn't blow, when we had really cold days, we were reliant on importing from the EU, on coal and on gas. How are we going to replace that in the short term? Quite frankly, I'm not a scientist. What I am doing is listening to what all the experts are saying. We're living in this insane world where the experts aren't being listened to. The United Nations has called for no more oil and gas. The International Energy Agency has said we can have no new oil and gas. The IPCC report, the largest global report on the climate crisis, have all said we can have no new oil and gas. How many more experts need to say it? Because we can't do it tomorrow. What are we going to do in terms of transport? that we still need petrol for cars and we need diesel for lorries. How are we going to get goods into supermarkets without this? Quite frankly, I'm not a scientist. What I'm doing is I'm looking at the world and we're living the, the effects of the climate crisis today. Right now, people are dying. Children are starving. Well, Families but, are fleeing their homes. But energy... Is, and it's preventable. Energy, we have the solutions. Cheap energy is one of the things that has hugely extended life expectancy by the ability to control temperatures, whether this is by air conditioning or by heating, the ability to store food more effectively, the ability to transport food, and indeed to use fertilisers to grow more food, has all been essential in increasing life expectancy. Taking all that away would be disastrous for life expectancy. Do you know what's essential in keeping our food supply? Tackling the climate crisis. This year we lost a third of our wheat crops, half of our potato crops, and it's only going to get worse. Mm. We're heading to a future where people are going to be fighting over the last loaves of bread at Lidl? But the only way we get our wheat crop is by putting the fertilizers on that come from fossil fuels. How are we going to replace that? That the productivity of organic farming is so much lower than of modern farming methods. We cannot feed the world on organic farming. And you must know that. How do you expect to feed the world when our crops are destroyed by droughts, floods, wildfires, storms? You've always had 
um, weather events that have affected crops, but that actually using fossil fuels for fertilizers and moving on to genetic modification of crops has enormously increased the yield. That since Malthus rate, we've increased agricultural productivity by about 2% per annum. And this is what is allowing people uh, to get extended life expectancy because they've got more certainty of food. And this all depends on cheap energy, which has come from fossil fuels. Jacob, you have six children. Do you not care about their future? Do you not care about them being able to feed themselves? Because right now, under this government's policies, your six children are heading towards a future that is filled with life-threatening extreme weather events, crop failures, famine, war, uh, suffering on a scale uh, completely uh, unimaginable. I, I think you've taken the evidence for an evolving climate and then applied it in an extraordinarily extreme way and are forgetting about the enormous advantages. I can't advantages. believe you're talking to me about an evolving climate. Well, the climate people is People all... are dying. But uh, th this is a statement... Do you know statement. how many people uh, are suffering uh, around the world? What evidence is there that this is because we're using fossil fuels, that the climate evolves, but more people die each year from cold than from heat, as Have you know? Have you read the IPCC report? What do it. you mean? What science? What, but in terms, you're making extreme claims, but you're suggesting by not using fossil fuels, we would not produce the food we need to feed the world population. I'm and suggesting that, would be that if we keep on heading down this genocidal path of mass destruction, then no, there won't be any foods in the supermarket. But then we will see vast ways of the world uninhabitable. But we will see mass displacement of people. But if you took out fossil fuels tomorrow, you would simply not have the productivity of agriculture you ha need to feed eight or nine billion people. And that would be tomorrow. And I'm not saying you shouldn't reduce emissions not arguing that. I'm simply saying you must do it when you have the technology to replace the energy that you're using. Because otherwise, all the consequences you're arguing for will happen immediately. We will simply not have the food we need to feed the population of the world. Jacob, you know we're not asking for the taps to be turned off tomorrow. All of you know that. We're asking for an end to all new fossil fuel licences, in line with what climate scientists around the world are saying. But if you turn it off for new licences now, you're requiring a change that is going to happen before we have the technology in place to substitute for it. So you may be delaying it by a few years, but this has to be a rational process to do it once you've got the technology sorted out, and we haven't got the technology yet. So I understand you're, you're an economics man, yes? So well, I'm interested in economics. Yeah, so I've done some, some maths for you. I hope you don't mind. I looked up your net worth online. It's quite easy to find. Well, it's not actually true. It's easy to find, but it's in not actually true. In the hundreds of millions. But that's not... It uh, costs around £20,000 to insulate a British home. So that's 8,000 British homes for your 150 net million, but which I, is what uh, it says online. But, which is untrue. But Do you um, really think that you're worth you, more but, than 8,000 cold, freezing have you, families? Have you, have you seen the studies on insulation? That insulation, Do you care about the people I, I, living in fuel but, poverty? Um, very much so. When I was Secretary of State for Energy, I was responsible for developing the plan that has brought energy prices down for families. That was policy that I was intimately involved in designing. So, of course, I care about that. So you do but, understand but, but, but the on. report that you're asking but me about I'm, says that the cost I'm, of insulating British yes, homes is but, so expensive because you, of the government's and, failure and you know, to insulate British homes. But what happens three years after people have insulated their homes? They use the same amount of energy as they did before. There's been a study on this, which I'm sure you've seen reports on. In the first year, they save money. In the second year, they save a small amount of money. In the third year, they have actually made themselves warmer because um, the economics of it is they have a certain amount they can spend on What energy. happens when the government fails to insulate British homes? 7.5 million there's, British there's, people live in fuel there poverty. Is a big Parents are starving themselves so that they can feed a, their children, and people are freezing to death in their homes because they are forced to is, choose between heating this, this is, and eating. But this is people are not dying. This are is, you hearing me? Because it's simply not true. The government introduced a cap on energy prices and support for families who couldn't afford energy prices. That those were brought in last year, and they are very significant. What do you mean it's not true? Have you spoken to an ordinary well, person who is suffering the cost? Well, I, living I, don't, right now. I don't believe there's any such thing as ordinary people. I believe everybody is in their individual way quite remarkable. I think ordinary people is the most condescending way of referring to our fellow British citizens. Well, of course you don't relate to the ordinary people. You're a millionaire. Um, the figures, my personal circumstances have nothing to do with whether we impoverish people by making energy prices higher. And you want to make them higher, and I don't. But what I'd say to you finally is why don't you stand for election? Why do you think it is right 
to throw soup over a picture, run standing election and seeing if you can get people to vote for your view of the world. You're an educated man, Jacob. You know that this is how successful movements of social change happen. They must cause disruption. And Antonio I, Gutierrez, he's the, he's the true. Secretary General the, of the United Nations, he has said that the, we are on a highway to climate the, hell. He has said way, that licensing new fossil fuels is economic and moral madness. The Secretary General yes, of the United Nations is calling why for an end to why, all new fossil fuels. What stand, makes you think that I have time to get into power and make these changes? So you want to be a dictator? You don't want... For, voters to decide. That's you want to tell them. That's absolutely not what I said and you know Why don't that. you stand for election? Put yourself forward and see if people want your way. Because we don't have right. time. Because so if you, I want to have a future, so if I want to have a have future tell, where I can feed myself, where I can love my we're not, family, we're not, going to feed them, have, we're not going to feed them without fossil fuels, which are the essential fertilizers. Las personas que solo gritan o se quejan sin ofrecer soluciones reales a un problema pueden ser percibidas como parte de un comportamiento negativo o improductivo. Este tipo de actitudes pueden ser frustrantes para quienes buscan abordar y resolver problemas de manera constructiva. Sin embargo, es admirable la manera en cómo Jacob aborda la actitud de la joven impulsiva con una actitud calmada. ¿Hubieras actuado como él? ¿O hubieras buscado salsa de tomate para ya sabes qué hacer? ¿Crees que la ONU tiene razón? Déjamelo saber en los comentarios. El problema generado por los combustibles fósiles, como el cambio climático y la contaminación del aire, es complejo y requiere soluciones a largo plazo para abordar sus raíces estructurales. Fomentar la adopción de fuentes de energía renovable, como por ejemplo la solar y la eólica, puede reducir la dependencia de los combustibles fósiles en el sector de la energía. Debemos reconocer que una solución completa y duradera requerirá cambios estructurales a nivel mundial y una transición hacia una economía más sostenible y resiliente. Pero todo será a largo plazo. La transición rápida, lejos de los combustibles fósiles, podría tener varios impactos económicos negativos a corto plazo. La transición a tecnologías más limpias y sostenibles podría resultar en la disminución de empleos en sectores tradicionalmente vinculados a los combustibles fósiles, como la industria petrolera y del carbón. Esto podría conducir a desplazamientos laborales y la necesidad de reentrenamiento para empleos en sectores emergentes. Cambiar a fuentes de energía renovable y tecnologías más limpias pueden requerir inversiones significativas en nuevas infraestructuras. A corto plazo, esto podría ser un desafío económico para algunas regiones y empresas. Las empresas que dependen en gran medida de los combustibles fósiles podrían enfrentar aumentos de costos debido a la necesidad de adaptarse a tecnologías más limpias. Esto puede afectar su rentabilidad a corto plazo. En áreas donde la economía está fuertemente vinculada a la extracción y producción de combustibles fósiles, el cambio rápido puede tener un impacto significativo en la economía local, especialmente si no se implementan medidas de mitigación y progresión programas de transición. La transición rápida puede llevar a una mayor volatilidad en los mercados de energía, ya que los precios de las fuentes de energía renovable pueden ser más variables que los de los combustibles fósiles. Las empresas que han invertido considerablemente en infraestructuras basadas en combustibles fósiles podrían enfrentar desafíos financieros, como la depreciación de activos y la necesidad de reorientar inversiones hacia tecnologías más sostenibles. Las naciones que son grandes exportadoras o importadoras de combustibles fósiles podrían enfrentar cambios significativos en sus patrones comerciales, lo que podría afectar a las industrias y empleos vinculados a estas transacciones. ¿Y tú qué opinas? Déjamelo saber en los comentarios. Y aquí culmina este video. Si te gustó, dale like, comenta el video y compártelo. Gracias, hasta luego.